Hello, welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Uh, great show for you this week, we've got things on glues, so we're going to be talking about the differences and doing our head-to-head -head test that went down almost quite well last week. Um, so we've got those on test and different types of glue. Airwolf makes its return and all the rest of it. Yeah, that's definitely Airwolf, so that makes a return. You can see how I'm getting on with that one and moving through. We've got the transol, so members, you'll be able to see this one. There's two parts of this up first, there's a whole hour of building work which gets us to this stage here. So that's coming on quite nicely, and uh, in a minute I'll be telling you all about some news that's coming up uh, about changes to the site and how it's going to run and things like that. Also, the other thing as well is we've got all uh, some of your great work that's been available uh, in the forum and that you've posted up for your final reveal photos. We're going to be having a look at those as well. So to start off with, we're going to rush straight in for this week and we're going to have a look at glues. So in this one we've actually got the more modern types of glues. We're not talking the old-fashioned stuff like poly cements because that's basically it, that stuff's horrible, doesn't work. Or the contact, which I know is great for the kids and everything else, but it doesn't give you brilliant results, no the rest of it. So we're talking, I've got four of the sort of major ones available in the UK for this one. So this one we've got, I know, I say available in the UK, if you can get it. Um, Tamiya Extra Thin, I know it's available in the States and obviously Far East. UK and Europe's a bit of a nightmare for getting hold of this stuff. But as I say, everybody knows it and I use it all the time. So we've got that on test. We've got uh, Mr. Hobby, this is the Mr. Cement S which is first time I've used this, and, and you'll see all about that one. I was quite impressed with that. And then obviously we've got uh, EMA's Plastic Weld, okay, big bottles of that one. And we've got Slater's Mech Pack, sorry, Mech Pack, uh, which is liquid poly as well, uh, non-flammable, that one, which is amazing. So the rest of them, I should think you wouldn't want to smoke near it at all. So anyway, let's have a look at those. Okay, so this week's on test is glues. Okay, quick history lesson. Um, basically, back in the day, we all had tubes of glue like this. Um, basically it's uh, poly cement, um, it's not what we call like a hot or a weld action one, it was the old original one where you used to glue it to your fingers and there are big stringy bits coming off when you used to touch your model, it used to take forever to dry uh, and generally left big gluey marks all over your model. Then came along what we call the liquid polys. Now, as I say, Humbrol did a version, Ravel's here, and I know everybody else did. Basically, um, it was a almost a full hot weld action like these behind here. So it's somewhere between the two. So I, you still had the gluey marks, but instead of actually this stuff just drying hard and crusty and joining your models together, this stuff would actually start to melt the plastic to weld it together. It was quite an innovation because they all came with these little brushes on the top like this and we could just brush it onto our model and away we went. But still you were left with quite gluey marks because if you brushed it on the surface you wouldn't get a good weld, it still really needed to be between the two and obviously you're leaving big glue marks and things like that afterwards. So really those two are the sort of the older ones. The new breed of them, what I call the weld affection or hot ones, um, in a nutshell, we've got here, we've got the Tamiya Extra Thin. Now this is the one I actually like. Now um, Tamiya do other, other types. They do uh, a lime one and they do obviously normal liquid cement. This is an extra thin one. It's really like a water. Um, it's very, very good as we, you'll see in a moment. The other one, obviously the competition for them I suppose, would be um, the Mr. Hobby one. Uh, the same type of thing, uh, a nice liquid one. I'm going to put this one on test against the other. I don't really use this one very often, so it'd be nice to see it. The other ones which are available are what I call the more sort of industrial versions. Uh, EMA's one uh, that we've got down here, which I've had before, tends to be a little bit smelly uh, using it, but works very well. But there's fours and against, we'll talk about that in a moment. And one I've never touched in my life before uh, is this Slater's one. This is what we call Mech Pack. Now, this one here actually isn't flammable, which is quite a miracle, seeing as all the others are. All right, so the first thing you have to remember is these are all quite, and don't try this at home, I do it so you don't have to, they all whiff quite a bit. This one tends to smell like cough mixture. So if you need your nostrils cleaning, Okay, the pack one, uh, sorry, the EMA one, doesn't smell as bad as I remember. I thought it used to stink, but doesn't smell too bad. Okay, and then we've got the actual uh, Cement S, which smells quite nice. Again, comes with its own little brush. Okay, and then we've got the one that I tend to use all the time is the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. Again, got its own little brush. It's got quite a pokey thing to it. So out of them all, the more whiffy one, if you like, is Tamiya Extra Thin, okay? 
So what we're going to do, we are just going to have a go on a couple of little things. First of all, we're going to just brush it on to see if it's got an actual evaporation type mark. So what I've got here is an old weapon set we're going to test this on. So first up, we are just going to spray, put a little bit just over down a piece of plastic just like that. Okay, so first up is the Hermia one. So okay. The brush on the um, Mr. S one is different. It's quite a weird design, but it works very well, I must admit. So we're just gonna brush that down. The other two, you don't get a brush, okay? So there's two things you can do this. Either take your old Tamiya bottles, Mr. S bottles, if you're gonna change over and decant it into that, or as I say, a clean brush. Now I've got a brand new brushes here. All right, so we just go in there, so just the same. And brush it on just a bit more because it's a smaller brush just like so and then what we do is clean that brush <coughs> and we try it on this last one okay and we're just going to brush it all the way down On. So if I leave them in this order, we know how we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is just have a quick look and see how we're going. So you would expect they are a sort of a weld action. Just dry that off. So what they actually do, they dry extremely quickly. Okay, and that's the beauty about using these paints. They go on, they dry, so they're actually touchable as you go around them now already okay now obviously they're going to be slightly soft because they've melted the paint so if you're going to stick your nail in it you are going to leave the nail bark but you can over touch them just like that this one down is still a little bit wet but obviously it's the last one to do so when you look at the surface you can see they're quite clean so obviously starting this end is the tamiya one the mr s and then we've got the actual um the slaters one there the pack and then we've got the uh, ema one on the ends. So looking at the surface of them all, they all look very nice. If I'm honest, the one that's left the biggest mark after using it is the AMA. We've got a little bit of brush marking in there and it's rippled the surface a little bit more than the other. I would say in second position would be probably the Slater's one. That one there, I must admit, has left a, uh, a little mark on the top. Then I would say it's the um, Tamiya one, and then I'd actually have to say it's the Mr. S. So in surface marking, I would actually say it is the Mr. S one, which has come out the winner on that. So the next little test I want to do, which is slightly out of order, but it'll make sense in a moment, is we're going to grab an old plane. Okay, so we've got a very old one I've just got kicking around here. We're gonna flip it upside down, and we're gonna give this a bit of a test to see if it eats into the paint. All right, so we're just gonna take a little one here. So for this purpose, we're just gonna put a little brush full just down on the top of the door, just to see what happens. Okay, we're gonna do the same on the other side. And then just gonna grab Stuff in here, we'll pop up just down there. So, as I say, we're only making one pass, so it shouldn't eat in and all the rest of it. Clean that brush. Okay, so this would be in the situation, he says, pulling it down his hand. This would be the situation where you would obviously have to glue a part to a painted area, things like that. Okay, and what we can do is we can have a quick look to see how that's gone immediately. And you can't really see, I suppose you can a little bit. Okay, up the top here, turn this around the other way, up here, that mark you might be able to see, just got it in there, that's the Tamiya, and it has left a little mark, although it might dry back. Over this side, we have the Mr. S. Again, it's left a little mark, you can see it in there. And then down here, on the side, where you probably can't see it, little mark there tiny one that's the um the slaters one the mech one and then just down here i put it down there come on camera there we go 
where there's no mark really at all, a faint little one, you can just about see it there. Um, that was the uh, MA, uh, sorry, EMA one. Okay, so I think what you'd basically be saying is just looking at it here, they're all totally dry, but to be honest, the EMA one has worked the best. Has left the, the least type of mark on there. Just looking at those, so we'll come back to that and see how it looks in a moment to see if it's changed it at all, because sometimes they bubble up and everything else. So that is the um, the side of it, if you like, which is sort of the cosmetic side. Will it mark? How is it going to react every day or down? At the end of the day, it is a glue, so we want to see how it's going to glue. So what we've got here is one. This isn't glued. It's literally just pushed together on its pins. So this is how I would normally do it. We have the actual part in question. And this one, we've got this bomb. Okay, all I do, touch and then drag it along the seam line. Okay, same on the other side. Just along. Okay, and once you're in there, you give it a bit of a nudge. Now, the thing is with using these types of glues, what's great is if you've got any raised little areas, small parts in the join which are affecting it, by using these glues, it will melt those little bumps and knobbles and things like that, and perhaps little fail points in the uh, pin marks where they join together. It will melt them. So when you give them a bit of a nudge, it cleans the gap, closes it up, and away we go. Now, I haven't done the front end, so we better just do that as well. So again, just a tiny touch on the front. Okay, just use some scissors just to bring them together without marking it. Just a bit of a hold. Okay, so that is our Tamiya bomb. This will be our Mr. S bomb. So again, we'll just pop those together, push them in just the same. <clears throat> okay. I say the brush is a little bit weird on this because it it holds the glue. I would say a little bit better. It doesn't let it all just run out and everything else. It's almost like a foam stick. Just up like that. Bit of a nudge again. And obviously we're holding it together as much as we can to make give them all the equal chance. So we just place a drop down on the end. Hold that together. I have to say that the uh, Mr. S here is the most smelly of them all. Does tend to be a little bit whiffy. Okay. Then we've got this guy. Now this will be a test because this is a non-flammable, so I'm guessing it's not quite as aggressive as the others. Okay. So the glue. And say it's a little bit off-putting because of my brush in here. The only thing that's quite weird with it, I can't tell if it's just evaporating incredibly fast or I'm going through a lot of it, but I seem to be halfway through the bottle. as a kite and all these different types of glue. Quick hold, then same thing again, we're just going to put a blob on the end and snip together just to hold. Little gluing technique, if you use a pair of scissors on tiny little things like this, you don't get finger marks and all the rest of it. So you can just literally hold it there as it goes off and that takes care of it. Okay, that's that one done. Clean off brush. Oh, he says just running out of weapons. Quick cut. 
good job I've got a large selection from Trumpeter. One thing you have to say about their kits is at least you get every type of weapon for it, even if the aircraft used it or not. So it makes it great for your spares box. So if you're ever wondering about our Trumpeter kits value for money, they usually are just for the amount of extra weapons that you'll never use. Okay. So same thing again. Just make sure that's all in. Okay, so here we go. The EMA. So we do just the same as we did the other one. Generally just brush over. I must admit, the only thing I don't like about using both of these, uh, the Slater's one and this one, is that it don't come with a brush, because it's just so easy having a brush. Also, they're quite wide necks on these, and because these evaporate very quickly, I do wonder if, you know, the fumes coming off of here, which are being allowed to escape, you know, it's getting quite whiffy around here, and I don't normally get it with the Tamiya, or I don't normally smell it. It may be that I'm just not used to the smell. So that's why I am, and obviously, you know, over the years of using Tamiya Extra Thin, I've sort of got so used to it, I don't notice it anymore. But certainly, it's definitely a bit gluey around here. But not having the thing where you can just drop your paintbrush cap down to seal it up like you can with those is a bit of a undersight. I don't think it would take too much to pop a brush in the lid uh, and do it like that. But as you say, you know, I'm probably nitpicking here. You could just decant it into an old bottle which has got a brush in, because that's basically I've got a drawer full of empty Tamiya ones down next to me, um, which I tend to keep probably nostalgic. So there we go. That's all the, the glues done. Just like that. So if we have a look, Tamiya one, you know, as I would expect, we have got a little bit of movement on there, but basically it's joined it up all very well. Okay, it's got no big seams or anything else in, considering I didn't clean the parts or anything else like that, they've still got the sprue marks and all the bits, so it's quite nice. The uh, Mr. Uh, Cement S, again, very nice, I must admit. I've not used it before, but um, it's certainly becoming a bit of a favorite here. Um, a little bit uh, aggressive, shall we say. We've got quite a lot of melted plastic on the top which is funny because it didn't mark the paint one um, but uh, it's done the job all very nice and last we've got the uh, EMA again a very nice job as I say it's one of those ones it's very hard to judge a winner and all that with the glues when you're doing it with this type of thing when you build an actual kit with it it's not so much how good the glue is because really they're all doing the same thing it's how useful are they to you you know, and when you go and have a look at them, a couple of things spring to mind. Okay, these easily fall over, but you know, you can knock one of them over, and if that knocks over, you've lost a lot, and your mat will melt, and that's basically, we've all done it at some point, but that would be a real nightmare. To be honest, exactly the same with the mech stuff as well, okay? The Tamiya one is quite easy to knock over as well. But being square, it is a lot better. I know guys who make holders for these for that to stop happen. But the Mr. S one, because it's a squat, it's a lower down version, it just seems to be a better design and all the rest of it, it will probably be harder to knock over. It just feels like it. It's got a taller lid, so I would think it'd probably be easier to knock over, but I'm not sure. But um, going through all of these, if I have to say a winner, which it just shows how unbiased I am because I don't use it, I would have to say that is our winner. It does good glue results. It doesn't leave marks on pla painted plastic or certainly acrylic painted plastic as those are. It's a nice tight lid on the top. The hole's very small, so you're gonna get minimal evaporation, minimal spillage and things like that. The brush is quite a nice design. It tends to be, when you look at the end of the brush, you see this whiteness, that is full of whatever the tip is made out of. I assume it's something uh, or other, some type of fibre, okay? But because it loads it all the way up inside here, it holds a good amount of glue. So when you put it in, it's being drawn up, okay? Which is not as good. The Tamiya one, if you look, it just goes up to that point. It goes, sorry, if 
I'll show you even, it goes up a little bit, but it only goes halfway up that little stem, and the bristles are a lot finer. Now, I know what you're going to say, because I agree, this stuff is fine, it's designed to be doing fine little areas and everything else, but I can't tell any difference really between the glues of them all. They are all doing a fantastic job, but I would just say out of ease, out of smell, and certainly out of usage, at the moment I would have to say Mr. S takes the lead, and then after that I would say Tamiya, and then after that really these do a great job, both of them. The only thing I would say is this one is non-flammable, so I'm presuming it's not as deadly as the other, although it does say harmful, but you'd expect that anyway. Um, but as I say, all the others are a little bit, what I'm going to try and do now is pull it all apart. So obviously, let me put them in order again. Down here, we've got the Tamiya one. And as you can see, world action works lovely. In fact, it works too lovely because that is really, really strong. That's really hard to pull apart. There we go. But as you can see, it's welded up those areas of tree. You see the white, obviously the stress marking as it goes down, but if we just stick the thumb in here and pull, as you can see, that's how strong it is. We've broke the plastic over the weapon. All right, so that's a good one for that. Now I, I know what you're gonna say, because everyone has these things on this, oh, well, it's had longer to dry. Oh. All right, play the game. I can't even get this one undone. Oh, there we go. Okay, you can see a slight difference in this one. You can see the weld is a lot more. It seems to have penetrated deeper in. Which is quite a nice test, this, because it will show us the depth of penetration by holding it together. So we're pulling apart, same as we did before. And it snapped it as well. But if we compare the it's quite hard to show here but if you look at the glue if you can see it catch it on the light I think if we get rid of these we just show you on these two because this is a good example okay you can actually see this one on this side with this real molten glue pattern in there, really melted deep into the plastic. This over here is the Mr. S one, okay, the Gunzo stuff. And over here you've got the Tamiya stuff. And the Tamiya one, if you look at this one, the Gunzo, is penetrated very deep and really got into the plastic. Whereas the, um, the Tamiya one over on this side is the Tamiya one doesn't seem to have penetrated quite as deep. It's doing a good job though and everything else, but the Mr. S one does seem to be in there quite nicely. And to be honest, pulling it apart, the Mr. S one was a lot stronger. So we're just coming in here again. This is the Mech one. So the Mech one pulling apart. Ooh bit of a failure there because it's the only one I've managed to pull apart in two. But again, we've got good penetration that the glue's managed to penetrate deep into the joints and everything else like that. Okay, uh, and just looking how the weld action is on it, I don't know, it just didn't feel as strong. Okay, and it's probably at the same amount of time now as where we were talking is where we'd have been brushing it on. Okay, this is the MEC. Sorry, the EMA even. I'm gonna keep well, I'll keep saying that. Cool, and this is really tough. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. To be honest, I've just had to jam that to get that to open, where the others I didn't. Okay. So we're pulling it apart, you can see the stress area, the white as we go through. So we're near to this top area, so we'll give it a pull. Oh. Again, it's pulled open quite easily. But I have to say, if you look how much glue is on these, it's not a lot at all. It's got no real penetration. It hasn't gone in there that far at all. The only thing I can think of, it evaporates so quick, it's evaporated too quick, 
before it could actually get in there and glue but there's hardly any, any glue gone in there at all and to be honest it did have a good brush fall because it had a little tiny bead of it that I saw go in as well but you can see it hasn't done a brilliant job in there so okay what are we going to say with this one how are we going to sum this one up okay I have to say overall winner um, for just sheer ease glueability and everything else is the um, Mr. Hobby paint which I must admit you know um, hands up I've used this stuff now for the last 10 years uh, haven't really used this stuff before probably because I do have a lot of this around okay and everything else it's always a problem getting hold of Tamiya Extra Thin in the UK especially and certainly around Europe I know it's filtering itself back into the US and everything else but I do have to say in the UK this stuff is readily available and I would say go out and buy yourself a bottle of this. Next, I would say get yourself some Tammy Extra Thin because it's good, it's stable, it does the job, okay? Out of these two guys, I have to say the EMA stuff dries far too fast by the look of it. When you're brushing it, you've only got to touch it and it evaporates uh, and it goes. Um, there's not a lot of it hanging around um, and then I, you know, I don't know. This stuff I haven't totally made my mind up on. It's not as good as this stuff, I have to say, but I don't know. It, it's just one of those things. It's it's probably great for more detailed work. Such would be using the plastic weld. If you're putting on a small precision part and you need it to go on and dry instantly, something like that, perhaps as we were saying, if you're going to be putting detailed parts onto your aircraft and you just need to put in a little piece of plastic perhaps you could come along get yourself a bit of this place the part down there give it a touch and let the capillary action flow and it will weld it in place it's probably great for that whereas the other two are a little bit more clunky but that said you can always get yourself a little brush pop in and give it a brush just like that so summing up there we go our winner for this uh, today's on test is the uh, Mr Hobby Mr Cement S Okay, so there you go. So sort of summing up with that, I have to say I was really, really impressed with the Mr. Hobby glue liquid cement. Um, various retailers for that one. Uh, this particular one I got from, where do you get this one from? Um, uh, Models are Go do this one, but MDC do it as well in the UK, everything else. It's quite popular uh, rest of around the world. Uh, if you can't get a bottle of that, I would recommend obviously Tamiya Extra Thin. For more detailed work, I'm not saying this stuff doesn't work, it's just it's in big clumsy bottles as well, which I would knock over in a heartbeat. But I would say if you were doing more detailed stuff where you've got a precision parts you want to get into those two you know the older ones um could be a little bit clumsy shall we say they're better for glue in general areas but if you were putting something down perhaps post paint work things like that you can got a little bit of plastic and aerial something like that to go on these would be great for that so they're quite handy to have floating around so perhaps some of your more detailed work you can have these ones because they dry just like that really quick the only trouble is if you were doing something big and let's face it if you were doing the seam down this thing, there's no way you could use those glues because you'd have to do it in sections and work your way right the way through it. But certainly you can get away with it with the other type. So our winner for this uh, week's uh, on test is definitely good old fashioned humble cement. Say humble cement, Mr. Hobby cement. Get that right, could be quite an expensive job on that one. So anyway, uh, next week we have coming up on test, get all these, we do have fillers okay everybody says oh what filler do you use and everything else so we're going to be looking at fillers right the way through from good old-fashioned super glue and using it with talc and flour and all the rest of it using those and then we're going to go right the way through so we're going to be using we've got them here as well we've got all the mr surfaces which are like liquid putties and also i'm going to show you how to make your own liquid putty as well with cellulose thinners lacquer thinners and your normal putties and things like that so next week on test will be, or next time on test, is going to be putties and everything else like that. After that, everyone keeps asking me, what are you going to do after that? After that, I've got a good one coming up here, because we are putting on test Future. We used to know Future, as we all did, as being this one, right? And I've got a brand new unopened bottle there, which is going yellow, I do have to say. It's got a slight yellow tinge to it. And the new stuff, the milky stuff. Everybody who watches my videos knows I just use the new stuff works for me okay but also we're going to go head to head with um uh alclads uh which one they call it clear coat which is like a varnish lacquer it stinks to high heaven and also which i've never touched yet or anything else like that is what they call um is their aqua gloss which to me looks like that but that smells nice that doesn't 
Don't know. Anyway, so we're going to be putting them on test just the same, so that's what's coming up over the next few shows. So, anyway, the group build has started now, which is basically to get all those dead and dusty old models that are halfway built in your stashes that we've all got and everywhere lying around to really push forward and have a go at trying to get them finished off and moved on. So that's see how we get on with this one. Okay, so we're having our stored projects um, build on the site, a uh, special interest group going on in the forum at the moment. So here we are, I don't know if any of you remember, it was last year I started building here live on the shows, um, Airwolf. Okay, and to be honest, uh, it got canned uh, and sort of waylaid and everything else like that. So I've managed to go around and I think find most of the bits again. So with all stored projects, my first problem is this thing is absolutely covered in dust and horrible and it's still got the the seam lines running in there you wouldn't have probably seen this because when i was filming this last time we were in um the old camera format and it wasn't very clear and everything else so to you guys it probably looked absolutely spartan and clean what we've got here you can probably see them is we've got the marks running down the back we've got them over the back this is where we glued it all together and all the things like that the other thing as well if you look at the canopy and the glasswork it's all really dusty and some of that dust to be honest i think is on the inside although some of it's on the outside and everything else so whilst it's all together as a whole it's really nasty so what we need to do now is go around and clean up all these seam lines so usual things we have files we got a, a nice soft or low grit or high grit I should say get it the right way around skinny sponges these are great because we've got lots of detail in here especially riveting and everything else so I can get these in between the detail of the riveting so we don't obliterate the actual uh, riveting themselves we got some polishing sticks so we can polish this all up and then we can give it a good wipe over and everything else. But with a polishing stick, we can clean up all this glass work as well and just run right over the entire thing with it to make it all nice. But because it's got raised riveting details all over it, we do have to be a little bit careful as we go. So what we're going to do to start with is just work on some of these seams. So all we've got here is our skinny stick and we're just laying it in flat and just having a light rub over the seam. So what you can do is you can place your thumb as a guide, something like this, a rust snap of the thumb, so I don't obliterate over the detail. Same thing. And we can just work our way round and just take them all out like this. But with a skinny stick, it means I can get in between all the detail without killing it. So we just whip around these like this. So if you come back in a minute, I would have got these done and we can then polish all of this up. Okay, so there we go, that's done. And I must admit, we've gone all over the glass work here and everything else, sanding this up and getting it in. So it is gonna need a bit of polishing. So we just got this final areas to do at the top, which are quite coarse, but they're quite large. So we're just, Working our way through the grits, okay? So don't start on quite a fine grit because you're just wasting your time. You might as well go in with a heavier grit and get lighter. Now, if you're sanding away at it as well and you can just keep seeing a shiny part all the time, you've either got a real trench in there or it's not glued. But don't worry about it either way because we're gonna come back and take care of that because we want a nice, good, glossy finish on this one. So we might have to put in some uh, liquid putty just to take care of any joins and seams and things like that. So the only thing we've got here is a bit of a problem because we've got recessed panel line in here, uh, recessed detail with the seam line in it. So we'll just give it a little bit of a rub. And the strange thing is this plastic is more like ABS plastic than your normal styrenes you might find. Okay, so that's those done. So for the minute, we just use a blue sponge and can just do the top of this tail section where it had a seam running right the way down where we glued the two halves together. Okay and then we've got recessed panel lines up here so we don't have to be too worried about this so we can just give this a good old sand over and then we can see white marks in there so we know we're going to have to take care of those. So if we just to show you this top section, and then I can run around and do all the others. Okay, so we're just working down the front. And what we're trying to do at this point is we're knowing nothing else but taking out the scratches we made 
with a sanding stick. We're not trying to do any more. We're just trying to make it all nice so we can take them out. So you're looking to see if you've got any heavy duty scratches or anything else in there. So if I just run over the glass on the front so we can take out those scratches. And I know what you're thinking, God, you just sanded the glass. But you just have to bear with me, guys, because we've got a seam. You can see it lit up now quite easily down the front here, which needs to be taken care of. And it's the only way we're going to be able to do it. Because unfortunately, with helicopters and things like this, because the glass work has to go in early, it does mean you are stuck with trying to fix them all like that. So that's those done. Something rattling around in there. So anyway, what we do, is just gonna come along there with a skinny sponge, a little thin one, same thing, thumb in position, and just doing the same thing, trying to get rid of the sanding stick mark on all the th thing without obliterating all the detail. So i.e. all that riveting, even if you nick it, it shouldn't totally destroy it. But with a skinny sponge being so small, it gets in between the detail. And a lot of you have asked, what do I use these little ones for? This is it. It's great for getting into tiny little areas. And if you don't want to do a load of damage, you know, around wing joints, things like that, you can get in here with a little skinny sponge and just sand a little area without having to make any damaging all the area around it or having to mask up to try and protect it. But if you mask it, you're going to have a raised area and all those things. These little guys just get in there and they've got quite a bit of give in them. So they bend and you can use them inside air intakes. Anything you want to do like that. Pop these along. They go along like that. Then what we're going to do is just grab a polishing stick just to see how it looks. Okay, so green side, never wet them, just keep them dry. Okay, and then what we'll do, we're just gonna give this a good old buffer, just like that. And you can probably see it's getting nice and shiny. We've got a few scratches in there left over. So it's gonna take a bit of work in there. I wish I knew what was rattling around on the inside. That would drive me mad. And what we'll do, we're just going down the back. Looks like so, over the top here. All right, and we're just gonna walk down the front, over the glass work. This is where you have to make sure you've glued the glass work in right, otherwise you're gonna end up with it bending and then falling in. Okay. Just like that, then we're gonna flip over to the white side You'll probably see it will go lovely and glossy and polish this to a mirror shine if you wanted to. But what we'll do, we'll re-gloss and retake care of all the glass work everywhere pop round, rescribe, but this is the way we can see now exactly what we've got to work with. But that gives you an idea of what we're actually getting now. So we've got no seam lines along the back, we're good across there, we're okay looking down the front and we've got a little bit down this front edge to do. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on polishing this up and everything else. When we're happy with how it's all looking, we're gonna pop along with a little bit of putty and then take care of the rest of that and then we can really move on. But that is all next week. Okay, so then next week I'll be working on this one as well. As you can see, I've got a little bit of Mr. Surfacer on here and I'll show you about doing that one and that way we can start moving on with this one. And then obviously we'll go right the way through this, through painting, everything else like that. So I've got to clean all this glass work up and everything else will be my next job on this one. So that'll be looking forward to next week as we move through like that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to pop along and have a look at the forum and see what's going on in there. Okay, so welcome to the forum. Uh, a few little changes you probably see here. This is the uh, Pro Modelers TV area. Um, as you say, we've just got a couple of new sections in there so you can find out more about the new shows that are coming up in March. Uh, and you can obviously post your questions and your feedback and everything else. So that's that area there. 
Okay, so if we go through the galleries and see what's around. Okay, first up is um, this is Haggis's Jamie's Swordfish Airfix, the new kit. Uh, this will be appearing in a Sam magazine very, very soon. Um, just got to say here, Andy, I couldn't get your photos to load through for your Tomcat, so I'll put them in next week. Okay, Tony's Spitfire. This is the Airfix Mark One, so it's got the uh, just the little twin prop on that. Nice paintwork on that one. Nice weathering all the way through. And as I say, it's nice to see it on a little base like that. Really sets it off very, very nicely. So uh, well done to Tony on that one. Next up, we've got Matt's. Um, this is the Hasegawa 148 Typhoon, and we're not talking the jet one. This is the prop Mark One. I think it's what they call the car door version. It's got the big door on the side of it, like a car door. But again, it's uh, nice to see the old uh, Typhoon out and about. It's one of those ones which tends to get uh, a little bit uh, overlooked back here, I think. And then next we've got, uh, this is, I can't remember this now, this is the uh, Spitfire. This is the 132nd Revel Mark 2224. Uh, Damon's one here, again, very nice having it all opened up. Very nice on the display base as well. Sets it off quite nicely being on a gravel base like that. So uh, well done, Tim, on that one. And next we've got Lloyd's Hurricane. Uh, nice to see the 148 Hurricane coming along now. Uh, as you say, nice paintwork on that one. Nice weathered, heavy down weathered, very matted look to it. Nice weathering on the underside. So well done to Lloyd for that one. Next up is a real old favourite. This is the old Revel 132nd F14A, uh, which at the time, which must be 20 plus years old now, this kit, was cutting edge. And to see it there now really is still holding its own. It's, uh, you know, still looking the business and all the rest of it. Nice weathering, nice wash lines on those. Uh, real classic and seeing it in the A-type as well, in the uh, nice sort of 1970s colours as well. Really does look nice, that one. So what well I'm doing for that one. This is uh, the new Italeri Academy, uh, which is Italeri's Rebox of the Academy uh, Hawker Hunter. Um, as I say, we were discussing in the forum that the ejector seat looks a little bit out of scale and a bit small. Not too sure on that one, not being a, a mass uh, expert on those. Anyway, into the uh, land galleries. So Sean's done here. Um, a very nice uh, Willie's Jeep. This is for a, a veteran's build. Uh, there's the veteran in question. Looking very happy. So congratulations to Sean for doing veteran's build as he does. Uh, and things like that. You know, he's the top guy for doing that. Absolutely fantastic. Next up we've got the, this is the M1A2 Abrams Enduring Freedom done by Tom. Um, as I say, nice on the display base as well with the crew. Gives it that sort of, you know, nice sets it off. Um, you know, sort of diorama piece like that. Nice grass, nice decking, nice weathered look to the Abrams. Something a little bit different. Don't see much of it. Wish we'd see some more. A little bit of sci-fi work here uh, on the tank. We want to see more photos as well. One photo. Need lots more photos because we're really interested to, you know, see how you do all these things. So go on, bung up some more photos in future. Lovely photographing on this one. This is the uh, Firefly Sherman done by Neil beautiful photograph and that it's got that real streaked weathered look to it as well flattened down paintwork and uh, really does look the business and say with the sandbags and the nettings and the all the stuff on the back and everything else it really does look nice uh, so well done Tim for that one okay what have we got next this is going to be the uh, M26 135th scale uh, Pershing by Ryan Nice build on this one. The only thing I would say is give it a flat coat. Kill it right down flat. It'll give it the more weighted, heavy look to it and all the rest of it. But apart from that, that's a top build. Nicely done. Speaking of flattened down and looking heavy and everything else, um, this is our own Dave's one. Uh, one of the team members here. Done a fantastic weathered down everything, beaten up T62A. And as I say, by giving it the flat coat, just gives it that heavy look to it. When they're on gloss and satin, they look a little bit lighter, but that's a great build. Well done to him for that. Okay, so something slightly different. Wanted to look at these for a while, but I just haven't got round to doing it in the C Gallery. Now, this here we've got is two weary subs by Eric, as he calls it. Weary, weather to hell, I call it. Some great weathering on these. It's always difficult to weather ships to get it right, to get it to look 
in scale, for want of a better word, um, and he's done these absolutely fantastic, and the rust on the Japanese stuff is second to none. It really does look in scale, um, so congratulations to him on that. It's got that mixture of the shine of the wetness with the flat and the rusty colours as well, and uh, so it's a right, real nice one on that. Other team member, Stefan, shame you didn't do it as a, as a build mate, because this is a real stunner. It would have been lovely to follow this one. This is the 1 to 400 scale um, DKM. This is the True Bits. Uh, lovely stuff. Look at that wiring. Nightmare. <laughs> stuff that nightmares are made of. But again, it's got that weighted down, in scale look to it. And as I say, with all the decking rails, things like that, and the deck as well. And it's on a beautiful base as well. So that really does look fantastic. So that's it for this week. Join us again next week. We'll be having some more look at your builds and everything else like that. So until then, take care. Okay, some of the changes that are going to be happening over um, the next two weeks. Um, next week, this is all going. As you see it here, this entire room is going to be emptied out because what you can't see is the complete junk heap of everything that's down this end. And to my side of me, I know you can see the kits here, but behind there is another, basically a wardrobe which is full of kits and there's kits on top of kits and everything else in there and everything else. So this is all going out into a totally different room and we're gonna rejig this entire room to basically become a purpose-built studio for all the filming. Now the trouble I have when I'm doing this, obviously I don't have a cameraman or a producer or an editor, sound man, lighting man and everything else because I am the man that does absolutely everything here. So because of that, I have to put fixed cameras in place and try and do them to camera which is normally works quite well but now we're getting good HD quality full screen crystal clear I'm trying to show you the details but I'm physically getting in the way so when I'm over here and I'm showing you stuff to camera I'm literally up here and I'm saying okay and here we are and I've got it back to front and hands and it doesn't really work because nine times out of ten when I come to do the editing I find I've got my hand in the way. So I'm saying, oh, and here we are like this, and all you can see is the back of my hand. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull apart this entire room, redoing all these benches. I've got this white countertop all the way around here. This is all coming off, and we're gonna actually have it so you guys are gonna be head on to me. I will sit down, and you will have the table here, and I can show you just like this. The camera will be a lot easier. Then we'll have fixed cameras above, Okay, which then will come straight down onto us and then from the side. So between all of them, we can edit together to get some real good shots and be able to show you everything. The other thing as well, we're having new lighting in here. So we're having professional studio type lighting in here. He says type lighting, hence I didn't say the real thing because we can't afford that. But that'll be in here as well. So hopefully we can get all the images nice, crystal clear and everything else and bring it to you guys. As I say, we keep on upgrading the sites being upgraded at the moment and all the things like that. Other things that are going to be changing, as of the 1st of March, these new shows, as you see them, are going to be completely revamped. We've got new sections in the forum that are talking about it already, which you guys can post up all your ideas in the forums, exactly what you want to see on the new show. We're going to have a few little sections, like, you know, basically ask me, and if I don't know, I'll find out over that week and try and try new things and things like that. So we can all have a go, and people say, like, how do you do such and such? And I can show you almost one-to-one -one exactly how I would do it. Or you say, if I don't know, I'll find out and give it a whirl, we can all experiment together, things like that. So that's the plan with that. The only thing is, they ain't gonna be on YouTube, okay? The thing was with YouTube, it's great because it was in HD. Now we can do HD ourselves on our own servers. We've got 300 odd hours on the server of our own stuff with the videos which have been upgraded. We can all do it on ourselves now, so we can move away from the YouTube and in. So if you're watching this on the free bit of the site, you're only going to get 10 minutes, um, you know, which is just going to whet your appetite. The rest of it will be a one hour news show every single week, with the exception of the odd holiday, illness and death. Okay, and I'll be here every week doing these types of shows with you. So we're going to be breaking them down into sort of arse fill. And then the full builds that you see at the moment, such as we're working on the transal, the Tomcat will be the lead one for this one, will be shown in the new show as well. Now don't panic, it will still be on the main site as well. So if we're doing a build which you're seeing in the new show, say it's going to be the Tomcat, that will also be a standalone build, so you can see parts, probably 1 to 20, um, 30 minute parts, as it is at the moment. So you don't have to get me going through, rabbiting through the new show as we go through. But also what happened is, all the ones where I do, such as we did the glue test today and everything, they're going to become standalone items as well, which will go in our reference library, so you can just click up and say putties, and it'll be me yapping on about putties. Or this week's instance, you're going to see the glue one, which may be a fuller version to what you're seeing right now, and things like that. So that's what's going to happen. It doesn't change anything for you guys, it just means a lot different for me for trying to work it. But 
what I'm trying to do is we're going to bring the forum in closer as we're doing already with these shows. We're trying to bring the actual builds into the forum more so they're more all together one big thing. Instead of it being the forum, the news show, SIGs, group builds, things like that, all as separate and these little things I tend to do in these shows, all as separate. We're trying to bring them into one big thing. So every week you'll get me for an hour, maybe an hour and a half doing a new show on these things. But say, if you don't want to watch the new show as a whole like we do this, you can watch individual parts if you're a subscriber. But that's the thing, we are moving away from YouTube and going on to our own servers because now they can cope quite frankly and we're in HD. So that's even better with our own server. So that's the plan with that one. So that's around about it for this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, I'm not sure there'll be a new show next week. Uh, obviously, if I've got a studio, I'll do it. If I haven't, I probably won't be able to. Or I'll bring it from downstairs in the office and things like that. We can talk about the forum and the other bits and pieces. But certainly, there'll be full builds with the transport and everything else up next week. So until then, everybody, happy modelling and take care.